Wilderness Act tells us to preserve wilderness character. We're starting to ask ourselves, well, how do we know if we're doing a good job or not? And what are the questions that we should be asking about to know if we're doing a good job preserving the untrammeled nature of wilderness? We're on the Kenai Peninsula, which is in South Central Alaska. A large part of the peninsula is in the Kenai Refuge and in the Chugach National Forest. We have abundant fisheries and wildlife and mostly really healthy habitat. The landscape is spruce forest predominantly and about 45% of the Kenai Peninsula is in wetlands. They're an incredibly important piece of the landscape. The Kenai National Wildlife Refuge is 2 million acres and 1.3 million acres of that or two-thirds of the refuge is congressionally designated wilderness and we call that the Kenai Wilderness. This is a wonderful place because not only are we charged with you know conserving the natural diversity but we actually have a refuge purpose that charges us with doing research, scientific research. Probably about 2005 was when we really understood that our climate was changing here on the peninsula and that we needed to start collecting more information to understand how fast that happened and to have a lot more collaborative projects and discussions with managers to help plan for the future. The climate in Alaska is changing at twice the rate of what's occurring down in the lower 48. Not only is our climate changing faster, but it's more obvious to us because it's not masked by all of these human cause effects that you see on the landscape. So it's like really self-evident when it's occurring here on the Kenai. We've lost 5% of alpine tundra to a landscape that's becoming afforested. Forests are showing up in places that they haven't been before, so they're marching up into the alpine tundra. They're also marching out into peatlands. These are peatlands that we know from carbon-14 dating that have been there for at least 8,000 years. This is a sphagnum fen. We have the live sphagnum layer on top, and then we have various woody roots. Down here, I'm seeing really highly decomposed peat without any woody roots in it. So for 13,000 years, this was a very soggy fen, and now this fen is drying out. Our models indicate that with the continued drying of the Kenai, all of these wetlands will become black spruce and um, really a much drier landscape. But the really big change that we're seeing is, is deforestation. Places that were once forested, we now have a system that looks very much like a grassland system. Starting in the early 1990s, we began to see spruce bark beetles killing some of our trees. There are always beetles in these forests, but the conditions have to be right for them to really flourish. The trigger seems to be two consecutive years of above average temperatures. And of course, what we've had in recent years is multiple years of above average temperatures. You have this spruce bark beetle outbreak that just continues to consume trees until basically you run out of trees. We did a very extensive but very rapid survey of a very large area of the southern part of the peninsula this summer, and, and we were actually able to identify about 40,000 acres of a contiguous polygon in which there appears to be absolutely no reforestation with no seed trees anywhere nearby. We know the landscape is changing. We actually know how it's changing for the most part. It's not gonna be just a simple reshuffling of what we traditionally consider native species. It's gonna be a reshuffling and an extirpation of some native species. Alaskans are very diverse in their opinions about a lot of topics, but probably the one thing that we all can agree on is that we love salmon. And that has really been an important piece to bring people together to talk about how we make sure that we keep these fisheries healthy. So we spend an awful lot of time putting out little temperature loggers in these creeks so that we can track how temperatures are changing. Because salmon are really cold water fish, they like temperatures about 55 degrees Fahrenheit and less. And we're already seeing temperatures up in the 70 degrees in some of these creeks. And so if those temperatures continue to rise, we will have systems that no longer can support salmon. Part of the research that we're trying to do is to help 
communities and managers understand where the stress is going to be on the fish populations. We did a bigger study across the whole Cook Inlet area. A number of those sites were on the Kenai Refuge, so wilderness areas that didn't have a lot of human impact. And by having sites like that, it allowed us to be able to narrow in on what was a climate signal and what was a development signal. So the research has been really important to help us understand why one stream is cold and why is one warm. And we didn't know that. You know, 20 years ago, we didn't really have an understanding of how much diversity there was in stream habitats. So now the challenge, of course, is now that we know what we have, we have to have some real clear strategies to help keep salmon still thriving on our landscape. If we can piece together protection for all of those cold water stepping stones that will allow the salmon to move their way up or down stream, then perhaps they can persist in these systems longer. So thinking about how we talk to landowners about protecting a particular spring system or improved protections for streamside vegetation, those kinds of actions are going to give salmon our best hope in the long run. With climate change, many of the wilderness areas are going to change big time. The species that live there are going to change as well. Having a good scientific understanding of the processes that are going on in wilderness areas, I think will allow us to manage them much more effectively in the long term. It's been interesting professionally to see the need for scientists to be much more outspoken to the decision makers about what's going on. It's kind of my responsibility as a researcher in Alaska to do my best to make sure that the salmon, as well as other sensitive species, are here in the future.